you are looking to buy, maybe to sell an antique, our next guest is the woman who knows it all. We're so happy to welcome back to our show this morning our beloved antiques appraiser, Dr. Lori. Good Hi, morning. Carly. Good morning. All nice right, we're on the blend. Yes, we're happy yeah. to have you here. I know some of our employees here, uh, here at Fox 4 are happy to have you here. They brought in some <laughs> things that they're hoping to once again maybe be able to book their flight to Tahiti. Yeah, let's put everybody on vacation. Uh -huh. Okay, well, you're not going to put everybody on vacation with this. Okay, <laughs> all right. Where do you want to start? The painting? I'm going to start here. Okay, so you're saying it's a painting, and I'm going to tell you it's a print. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> because correct identification is really what's important. You have to know, in fact, how to correctly identify it. So you need some tools. First thing, I want you to get a loop. Okay. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just a magnifying glass of some sort. So you're at the flea market, the yard sale. You're in Grandma's house. Get the magnifying glass out and start looking. Go down here, if you would. Go down to mm -hmm. the... There you go. And tell me, do you see dots or do you see brush strokes? Uh, dots. Dots. Now, dots are what you want to leave at the yard sale. Ah, okay. okay. Because this is a commercial print, like a dot matrix printer, done on a machine. Ah. But this is an old one. It probably dates to about 1900. One of the easiest ways, before you even get dots or loops or, you know, magnifiers, any of that stuff, turn your piece around okay. before you buy it and look at the back. Look at the back of the piece. Now, this is not an expensive piece. And look at the types of what are called oh, the class brads. Man. Right. Brads or framers points. This piece has been framed a couple of times. These brads indicate that it was framed probably in the 1930s. The piece is from about 1900. It's been put in this frame oh. about 1930. So these are some telltale signs. Also, water damage. Leave water damage there. Yeah. But if it's at Grandma's house, it's probably okay. worth, again, the cost of the frame, about $55. Okay. The print is decorative pretty, 10 bucks. <laughs> the frame about 50. So we can't go to Tahiti on this. <laughs> okay. Maybe you can get there. to, I don't know, Wait, Tulsa. It's lunch. We can have some <laughs> have Tahiti lunch. food. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Asian food, right. All right. So okay. where Let's do you want to go sports. Next? Okay. Sports. Okay. Which you like. I love sports. Yeah. I love sports. I'm mm -hmm. a sports fanatic. You are. I love it. I don't care what season it is. Let's go to a game. I love it. Okay. So a couple of things. We just finished, of course, the World Series, which now goes into November. Figure yeah. that out. <laughs> right. This particular piece is a relatively interesting piece. That is of course, the American League Here, White I, Sox. Make sure we can. And we probably have heard about folks like Shoeless Joe Jackson yeah. and such, you know, the great uh, Black Sox scandal. That's a period piece, and that piece is probably worth about $500. A postcard, uh, sports collectible folks will actually be looking for these types of pieces in good condition, uh, a nice postcard, a good piece of collectability. On Fox Business Network, Strange Inheritance, one of the features has mm -hmm. to do with, of course, great sports collectibles. Some of the pieces that are featured there are also from my appraisal event. So think about that. That con condition is very key when you have okay. a piece of sports memorabilia. And remember, about 90% to 95% of sports memorabilia is forged. Oh. A lot of it so is you really fake. Have to, yeah. You really have to know the provenance or the history okay. of the piece, and that has a good history. Pasadena, the Rose Bowl football, January 1st. I don't have gloves on. Can you pick that yeah, up? Yeah, sure. Just in case up. it's worth, you know. Sure, hon. I'll go to this camera. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if that'll help. I'll try. But this is from January the 1st. You know, the Rose Parade. Yeah. We watch it every year. The Rose Parade. This, of course, is going to be the... Um, the inauguration ceremonies ticket. There's okay. the shot. You guys are so good. From 1943, <laughs> January 1st. So, okay, so we're at war. Uh -huh. So that's going to be important. So it is a victory piece, a piece that relates to, again, what's happening in America during World War II, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that it's in very nice condition. Um, on the A through F scale mm -hmm. for paper, we can do condition A, B, C, D, E. This is probably about a B. Okay. It's in good condition. I suggest that you put it in a plastic folder of okay. some sort. Value on that about $15. Okay. It falls into multiple categories. Mm -hmm. It falls into World War II collectibles as well as Rose Bowl collectibles. People like to collect yeah. them. Okay. okay. Dr. Lurie, we only have a minute left. Okay. Do we... I want to talk about the golf clubs. First of all, good condition wooden golf clubs are usually about $25 a club. Okay. Those date from about the 1930s to the 1940s. But your Coca-Cola bottle... You had me at Coca-Cola. <laughs> I'm thinking we may have something good here, right? Your Coca-Cola, even with the rust, even in this condition, people like these particular pieces. And Coca-Cola is a brand name, of course. Mm -hmm. And Coca-Cola also has a great collector's yeah. format. Many people collect Coca-Cola, anything Coca-Cola. This piece, of course, is from about the 1940s. They make them to, until about the 1960s. Value on that one in this condition, about $350. Yeah. 
Yeah. In excellent condition, about 1200 bucks. But, too, I mean, I think people like it. You people know, like this, it. Even when yeah. it looks like that. They like it with so a So remember bit those of name age. brands. What are some other ones as we close here? Coca-Cola. Oh, you want to remember things like Tiffany. You want to okay. remember stuff like Hummel figurines. Don't forget about your Beanie Babies, which could have value-specific ones. You'd be surprised at okay. the stuff has value. And some of it is just junk. I'll tell All you the right. truth. <laughs> Dr. Lori, we love you. Thank you love for to be being on the here. Blend. We look forward to having you back. For more info, head to our website, foxforwarningblend.com. Feeling a little blue about cancer? Who isn't? Up next, how the Blue Oxford campaign is helping raise awareness with the treatment. Stay with us.